Well, step one of the project is always the least fun part. So we've got everything in the shop, kind of taken apart, taken out, we're cleaning, getting rid of stuff we don't need, and kind of doing an inventory for everything we need to start the project. We don't have a place to put it or really a place or a way to unload it. So here it sits on my other car trailer. And I think we're just gonna use it on the car trailer until this project's done and then try to sell it without ever unloading it. Today is officially day one and I'm gonna try to remove this camper shell by lifting with my back and hyperextending my knees. <laughs> you want to show us our floor plan? That's the bathroom. Where's the kitchen? Bacon eggs. Bacon eggs. With the truck bed removed, it was time to start working on the subframe. So we're building our camper to be eight feet long. So the back of the camper will stick out about one foot past where the factory hitch ends. Our research showed there are many, many ways to attach the subframe to the truck. Torsion-free systems, spring system, rigid mount systems, etc. <clears throat> We've decided to bolt it into the factory spots. So there will be one mount there where it bolts in the frame, just like the factory bed. And then that hole and that hole. <clears throat> We're gonna use a spring mount system so that it's held tight to the truck bed or to the truck frame, but if it needs to flex off-road, it can flex. So we have vacation renters in our house this weekend, but I wanted to keep making progress on the frame of the camper. So I set it up down here next to our shipping container house where we have electrical hauled the welder down and got set up with a temporary little chassis fixture and we're gonna keep making progress on this build. The plasma table does a great job of cutting out these parts, but occasionally we do get a little dross. The first step is to grind and sand these parts so that they're nice. Got the fender liners put together. Basically this outer flange becomes the fender and is also going to hold our panels. There's the fender. So I did a test sample where we laminated a piece of 16th aluminum to one inch Formula 150 to quarter inch MDF plywood stuff uh, using uh, Loctite PL Premium glue and a little bit of water. And now you're gonna try to bend it. And we're gonna try to bend it. So 180 pounds and I don't think there's any, any visible <laughs> Being attacked by a puppy. So I'd call that a success. Oh, 
lot of the design choices made with this camper come down to what are we capable of doing with the materials that we can readily get, the tools we already have, and the skill sets we are comfortable in. So there are lots of ways to build a camper. We're doing it the way that we think we're gonna have success with in a short amount of time. We're building this camper to be quite a bit smaller than most of the other examples we've seen out there. It's only going to be seven feet wide, eight feet long, and seven feet tall. We're building our truck camper to be small and light so it can be nimble and off-road capable. Our truck has a GVWR of 11,700 pounds. After removing the bed and other components that we're not going to need, it weighs 7,200 pounds, leaving us 4,500 pounds of payload capacity left. We are building our camper structure out of composite panels and aluminum structure and anticipate that the camper empty shell is going to weigh approximately a thousand pounds, leading us, uh, leaving us with 3,500 pounds of payload capacity. We're building our camper with a welded aluminum exoskeleton with composite panels glued in from the inside. So the parts you see in the light gray are composite panels and the parts in dark gray are the aluminum exoskeleton. I did an exhaustive amount of research on different ways to build composite panels. Realistically, I wanted to just buy composite panels, but that proved basically impossible as no manufacturer would respond to my emails or answer the phone. And it came down to the fact that if we wanted to get this done in a timely manner, we were gonna have to do it ourselves. Obviously, there are many ways to build a camper. We chose to use composite panels for a couple of reasons. No thermal bridging, well, minimal thermal bridging on our design and uh, lightweight and rigid. This is the test sample that you saw earlier when I stomped on it. Um, it didn't fail, I, I could not make it fail with my own weight. I ended up having to mechanically peel it apart. I wanted to see how the glue dried and, and what kind of bonding we were getting. As you can see, the foam failed before the glue bond failed. So that tells me there's no reason to get glue that's any stronger than what we have because the foam is our weak link, as expected. The glue we're using to build our composite panels is Loctite PL Premium. It's a one part moisture cured polyurethane adhesive that remains flexible and actually expands slightly while curing. That's great for filling gaps. Since we don't have a vacuum bagging system, we wanted a way to build panels using just weight from concrete blocks. Um, these composite panels are a bit unconventional compared to what we've seen in many other Overland builds, but that's because we had to use materials that we were able to get readily. So on the inside, this isn't the actual plywood we're using, this is just the test sample. But on the inside, we're going to be using uh, UV coated birch plywood. It's a really high quality water, water resistant plywood. On the inside is Owens Corning Foamular 150, which is a structural hydrophobic foam uh, that's intended to be glued to so it doesn't have a skin on it from the manufacturer. And then on the outside, we're using 050 5052 aluminum, which obviously is uh, impervious to moisture. It's UV stable. It's uh, it's aluminum. It's meant to be outside. It's gonna it's gonna be a great exterior skin and really durable. So the the camper is going to sit on the truck frame in all in ten places along the length, and then this last foot and a half it's gonna hang out past the truck frame. So we only have frame contact with this camper along six feet. Now, if we were building something that was 20 feet long, I'd be concerned about the torsional flexing destroying the camper, but we're only dealing with six feet here and I don't think that flex is gonna be a problem. Two. Plus our design is inherently flexible. Our panels, our camper, it's going to be able to flex a little bit without destroying this thing. We're building a monocoque structure, which means that every piece of this structure is going to contribute to the overall strength of this camper. So everything from the roof rack to the rear corners to the fender liners to the floor to the panels to the interior components like cabinets in the bathroom it's all going to contribute to building one strong overall structure make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow along as we build our ultimate expedition vehicle